In the gospel, God has done the unthinkable. He sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of God, to come into this world to live a perfect life that none of us could ever live, completely fulfilling the law of God on our behalf. He went to the cross, and on the cross, he suffered the full weight of the wrath of God against sin. On the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. And right now, he is seated at the right hand of the Father as we speak. And the time is coming. He's waiting until the time comes, that last, that last day when the, when the last trumpet sounds, when he will come back, separate the sheep from the goats, take his people home to be with him forever, and rule and reign with his church for the glory of God for all eternity. That's the gospel. Praise God for the good news that all, yes, that all who turn from their sins, who repent and believe the gospel, shall be saved from the wrath to come. And when Jesus ascended into heaven, he did a number of things, but one of the things that he did was he gave an immense, massive amount of gifts to his church. And that's what we're talking about in this conference is the particular gifts, ways to use the gifts that God has given in his generosity. And as we think about these gifts, we tend to limit the artistic gifts to a few things, usually things having to do with music. But it's important to remember that the scope of artistic giftings that God has given is extremely broad. So these principles that we're talking about apply to anyone who is involved in ceramics, drawing, painting, sculpture, pottery, printmaking, crafts, calligraphy, photography, illustration, animation, cartoonists, filmmaking, cinematography, architecture, industrial design, graphic design, fashion design, interior design, web design, <laughs> literature, novels, short stories, epics, poems, screenplay writing, dance, modern dance, ballet, jazz dance, hip hop, tap, theater, musical theater, opera, musicians, singers, spoken word artists, poets, MCs, producers, sound engineers, etc. It's it's broad. It's broad. Two categories that have been very helpful for me that I heard, first heard from Mike Cosper, who spoke earlier, is the categories of art from the church and art for the church. So art from the church, that is, the artist serving as salt and light in the artistic world while witnessing to the creative and redemptive power of God, not necessarily explicit in their art. And then there's art for the church, that is, art that's meant to, be, to serve in the gathered community of Christians by supporting the ministry of prayer and the word. So it's, it's all the artistic decisions that go into an event like this, right? So we've been served very well by all of the various forms of art. We see it all of just, just looking at this stage, we can see intentional decisions that were made, and those decisions have been made in order to set an atmosphere that would serve the proclamation of the word. That's art for the church. So it's not to distract from the word, but to uphold, support, and point to 
the word. And, that, and that's what art for the church is meant to do. Both groups are needed, by the way, art from the church and art for the church. Usually what happens is those groups tend to fight against each other. So the artist from the church says, man, what are y'all doing? Like, leave the four walls, get it out, mix, like, mix it up in the world, right? And then the artist from the church looks at the art, artist, uh, artist for the church looks at the artist from the church and says, what are you doing? You're selling out. I don't, is, is what you're doing even about Jesus? Like, what's going on? Right? And so we fight against each other. But what, what's actually meant to happen is, is that we're meant to, to encourage one another, to sharpen one another, and, uh, and to serve one another. But for our purposes tonight, I just want to ask the question, what biblical principles should guide our art making? What biblical principles should guide our art making? And one helpful passage I found very helpful is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11 which says this, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In this text, I want us to notice three things. One, the source of our gifts. Two, the proper use of our gifts. And three, the goal of our gifts. The source of our gifts, the proper use of our gifts, and the goal of our gifts. First, the source of our gifts. Notice verse 10, as each has received a gift. Received indicates that the one receiving is not the origin of the gift, but merely the recipient of the gift. Received from where? God himself. It came from God. Why did God give you the gift? Is it because you earned it? No. The end of verse 10 says your gift is a result of the grace of God. Grace implies that we did nothing to merit or deserve the gift. God simply decided to give it to you. 1 Corinthians 4, 7, what do you have that you did not receive? And if then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? And here's a thought. Your gift is actually not your gift. <laughs> you have it, but verse 10 says that we are stewards. What's a steward? A steward is a person employed to manage another's property a person whose responsibility it is to take care of something that belongs to another. So the gift actually belongs to God, and it's our responsibility to manage it well. Notice also that it's varied grace, varied meaning many colored, diverse. There's all kinds of gifts, and it looks different in different people. Everyone does not have the same gift. How boring would that be? Praise God. We're all meant to reflect God's glory in ways that are unique to each person. Praise God for that. The source of our gift is God. Second, the proper use of our gift. Verse 10, use it to serve one another. Where does your gift come from? God. What are you supposed to do with it? Use it to serve others. Notice it says use the gift. Use it. Not flaunt it. Not boast in it not belittle people with it, not hide it, <laughs> use it, simply use it. And it says, serve others. That's how we ought to see ourselves, not superstars, but servants, not to serve ourselves, but to serve others. Imagine if that's how we saw our art, if there were a generation of artists who saw their art as meant to serve others, how countercultural that would be. It means we would think about what would build others up the best rather than what, simply what we want to do. We would think about what would be best for the people that we're interacting with, not simply what makes us feel good. Serve is where we get the word deacon or minister from. We're called to minister, minister God's grace to others with our gifts, with servants. And then finally, the goal of our gift. The goal of our gift is the glory of God. Verse 11, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
And that's the why. The ultimate why is the glory of God. It's what the universe was made for. It's why we exist. It's all about the glory of God. And we must never lose sight of this. And this is so important because the world teaches us the exact opposite. The world tells us it's all about the artist. That's what we've been talking about, making a God out of the artist. But the Bible tells us differently. It's, it's about the glory of God. And so this should help us both evaluate the use of our own gifts as well as the gift of others. So as you're making art, just ask this question, am I concerned with building others up? Am I concerned about the glory of God? That's why community is so important to help us think through these things. These are good things to think about with others as you work on your various projects. So where does your gift come from? It comes from God. What are you supposed to do with it? Use it to serve others. What's the ultimate goal of your gift? The glory of God. May the Lord make it so. Thank you.